Upgrading to your dream house, but unsure how to sell your starter home? Step into my office and out of that two bedroom ranch with no backyard. Welcome to the Red Desk, where we give you the skinny on real estate and home ownership. In this episode, I'm going to cover one of the biggest fundamentals in real estate. No, not buying a house. That's covered in a previous episode. Today, we're talking about selling your home. So you're ready for the big move, huh? So throw the proverbial keys to the wind, like no one said ever. While it might seem like I've only ever owned this desk, I'll have you know that selling houses is one of my areas of expertise. And selling your home is a big deal. And there's a lot to it. Housing indicators, real estate agents, brokers, appraisals, inspections, escrow, overwhelming. I know, but it would be terrible if you woke up a year from now realizing you undersold your home or even worse, if you didn't sell it at all. So let's get to it. Selling a home is like taking your most prized possession, dressing it up real nice, hosting a party, and then hoping to come out with enough cash on the other side to make the whole experience worth it. There is definitely a right way to sell your home and a wrong way. Fortunately, there are millions of people who sell their homes each year and generations of knowledge to guide us through the process. Don't worry, this fancy sweater wearing host and Rocket have all the answers. Okay, back to the task at hand. First, let's answer the most common question of all. To agent or not to agent? That is the question. Yes, you can sell yourself. It's your house after all, but should you? 89% of homes in the US are sold using an agent or a broker. That's pretty much everyone. But why? What do real estate agents even do? Real estate agents are like marketers, networkers, interior designers, hardline negotiators, and lawyers all squished together. Specifically, agents will market your home listing, give you advice on how to show your home, schedule and conduct showings and open houses, answer or find any answers to any tough legal questions, and negotiate offers with buyers. Think of them like a safari guide. They're definitely there to help you have a good time, but their real job is to help you navigate the wilderness and come back alive, or in this case, sell your home at a price you deserve. So the best part about using an agent is that they have a legitimate interest in selling your home for the highest price possible. Why? Because the higher the price, the larger their commission. This is a good thing for you. An agent with some skin in the game is going to work their hardest for you. Could you sell your home yourself and save the commission? Sure, but here's the deal. Agents almost always get you a higher price for your home than when you sell it yourself. Even after their fees, you still come out ahead. Not to mention the countless hours and headaches they'll save you. The bottom line, we love agents. Consider them Red Desk approved. All right, let's get down to business, shall we? Introducing the nine steps to selling your home like a pro. Onward! Step one, research, research, research. If you're using a real estate agent, you can rely on them for help, but remember, you make the final call on how you price your home. The trick is to understand as much as you can about the real estate market in your area. Compare similar sized houses with the same number of beds and baths to get a sense of what the going rate is. Then check if the home prices in the area are trending up or down to get a general feel for the market. You can start your research by using the Rocket Homes Property Report. It uses real-time and historical data to give you a clear picture of what housing market conditions are currently like in your area, how much homes like yours are selling for, and how much you could reasonably expect your home to sell for if you were to list it today. It's a great place to start. Check out the link in the description. Keep in mind that most sellers tend to overvalue our homes. It's common because we're all a bunch of emotional saps who just can't let things go. 40% of listed homes reduce their list price before they accept an offer. So try to keep that bias in check when listing your home. Step two, time to get our hands dirty. Part of selling a house is showing it to potential buyers. And just like a job interview, it needs to look presentable. So what do you do? 
First, call and get all your major appliances like your AC unit and furnace serviced. You want those to be in tip top shape before you start showing your home. Second, fix all the little things like squeaky doors, cracked paint, holes in the walls from that time you rage quit sourdough baking. Third, clean and declutter everything. Your personal effects and knickknacks aren't going to help you sell your place. We want this baby looking like a magazine spread. And finally, change the layout of any rooms and even rent furniture as needed to really make it shine. The secret is to make the house feel like a playground for the buyer's imagination. If you want to sell your house, you've got to play the game. Step three, selecting your title company. At this point, you should determine which title company you'd like to use and order a pre-title for the house. This allows them to begin researching and foreseeing any roadblocks to the final sale, like the deed being listed under the wrong name or your bank imposing restrictions on when or who you can sell to. Step four, advertising. If you're handling this on your own, create a listing on Rocket Homes or ForSaleByOwner.com if you want to create a free listing. If you're working with an agent, they have access to exclusive forums and listing communities where they can share your listing and connect you with buying agents. Either way, make sure your photos are good before going public. Agents sometimes cover this in their commission, but you may have to hire a photographer or hone those photo chops. Good writing doesn't hurt either. Some sellers post their listings on social media, put a sign out front, advertise in local real estate magazines, or all the above. Step five, the showing. It's time to show your baby off to the world. Always include your contact information and try to keep the hours as open as possible for people to schedule showings. I'm not saying you have to open your home to a stranger at 4 a.m., but you may have to wake up before 10 a.m. on Saturdays. Tough life. As far as the actual showing goes, you or your agent can conduct these personally or at an open house. While open houses might seem like your best bet, and they often are in hot markets, individual showings typically generate more genuine offers. Some people just like browsing. Step six, the offer. So what do you do when offers start coming in? It could be almost immediately, or it could take months before you catch that big fish. Naturally, you're going to gravitate towards the biggest offer, but there's more to consider than just the price. Remember, everyone has their own reasons for buying and selling. Sometimes you need to sell ASAP, and sometimes you need to buy ASAP. Other times you aren't in a rush and you're just browsing. Before you accept an offer, ask the buyer a few questions to understand why they want to buy. Why? because accepting an offer is a legally binding contract. So you wanna make sure it's sound before getting into something that isn't a good fit. Also, haggling is expected, so be mentally prepared for a little back and forth action with the buyer and their agent. Step seven, the inspection. You did most of the prep in our second step, but if a lot of time has passed since you listed your house, make sure it's still looking tip top. Inspections are a way for a buyer to get a professional opinion on anything that may affect their impression or estimated value of your house. Think of inspectors like house detectives. They take a look to see if anything looks fishy and report back to the buyers. After the inspection, the buyer can formally request a different offer depending on what the inspector finds. Your job is to keep the inspector as impressed as possible. Pro tip! If the buyer pushes back on something safety related, don't fight it. If it's aesthetic concern, you may be able to push back in a counter offer. Step eight, the appraisal. Appraisals are another type of assessment lenders use to cover their bases. Appraisals are an unbiased professional opinion of what your home is worth. They are used during a mortgage transaction, whether you're buying or refinancing. More jargon, but it's important to understand. Appraisals ensure that the buyer isn't making a terrible decision by borrowing more than your house is worth. If inspectors are house detectives pulling together the facts, then you can think of appraisers as the big picture folks who connect all the dots to solve the crime. Or in this case, they'll use what the inspector discovered to estimate how much your home is worth. The appraiser will likely ask you to talk them through how you arrived at the price you settled on and check a lot of the same things the inspector did. If your appraisal doesn't meet or exceed the agreed upon sales price, that's bad. But 
there are a few options. The buyer could pay the difference in cash, you could renegotiate the sale price, or in some cases, both parties may need to walk away from the deal. And now, the final step, signing on the dotted line. Step nine, the closing. The time has come. The inspection is done. The appraisal has cleared. You are ready to sell your most prized possession. Is that a tear in your eye or is it just the lighting? It doesn't matter. It's time to close the door. The chapter, the blinds, no, oh, don't judge me. It's just so beautiful. All that's left is to sign the documents from your title company and get paid. Depending on how the agents involved set up the sale, either your escrow or title company will pay you what you're owed. Those companies or agent will let you know when everything is wrapped up. And in most cases, you'll get that cash as soon as the ink dries on those final documents. Then you get to kick back and relax or probably start moving. Either way, progress. And there you have it, the nine steps to selling your home. Feeling more confident? I hope so. If you want even more details on selling your home, check out the complete home seller's guide from Rocket Homes. It's a collection of free resources to make selling your home a breeze. You can click on the top right of the screen or use the link in the description below to get there. Until next time, Red Desk out! Thanks so much for watching, you guys. If you want to check out more Red Desk videos, click right here. And don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.